right in on it. All right. Right on. <laughs> Are we on? Yeah, we're here. We are on. Hey, Eric here again from Live Aquaria. We're here at the third and final day of the aquatic experience here in Schaumburg, Illinois. I have with me today a very special guest who some might consider the godfather of reef keeping. We've got Mr. Julian Sprung. Hi. Good morning, guys. <laughs> so, Julian, tell us, how's the aquatic experience been for you so far? This has been a wonderful show for us. Uh, we've really uh, had... A tremendous volume of traffic of people, some of them freshwater hobbyists, novice hobbyists, a lot of um, very avid marine reef aquarium people as well. Uh, it's been great meeting everybody and showing them our products, our existing line and some of our new products. I've enjoyed it very much. Thanks. Excellent. Yeah. So as far as products goes, what is new on the horizon for Two Little Fishes? On the horizon, I couldn't tell you. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of things coming, but I can show you the new stuff, of course, right here. Uh, we have over there, we'll go there in a moment, Stax is a new product for us, and that is a, an aquascaping natural limestone rock. It's porous, and it's sliced, what we call double cut, so it's basically sliced like bread. So you have these thin layers that you can stack one on top of each other, that's why the name Stax. And they can be glued, you can make caves. Um, because they're flat, you have a, the perfect surface for putting corals or plants suitable for fresh or salt water. Um, the other new product that we have, and we're introducing it now at this show, a little bit louder. A little bit louder if you're good. Sorry, okay. we are competing with the Sea Lion show. There. Yes, and isn't that great that here we are in an aquarium exhibition and they have. <laughs> sea lions, they've got aquascaping competitions. I mean, you were asking me about what do I think of the show. What I really love is seeing the kids involved in setting up aquariums there. And although, I think this is the fifth aquatic experience, um, although they've always had the aquascaping contest, this year in particular, you, I imagine you've gone and, and shot yes. a video yeah, of that. a lot of talent there. There are some really beautiful setups there. And, and you really, you don't see that at other shows here in the USA. Um, you, it's really stepped up a notch. It's like the international competitions. I was very impressed with that. And there, you know, even the shrimp competitions there, this is, you know, it's something new for me to see here in, in an aquarium show. So that made me excited. Yeah. You're gonna have to edit this and put that back to the first question. <laughs> yeah, a lot of great participation going on down yeah. here with contests and events and things like it, that. It is great. A good draw. Yeah, so back to the subject of, of new products. We are introducing our uh, salt, which is Accuracy One. And I have that right behind you, and there goes the uh, yeah, level. <laughs> no worries. Um, we have two sizes for the um, hobby right now for the end user. This is a 50 gallon Accuracy One. And it consists, I love the, the sound effects, it's great. <laughs> it consists of um, 10 individually weighed packs that each make five gallons of seawater. Uh, the, the pouch has a tear notch on it, so all you need to do is put five gallons into a bucket and have it circulating with a pump or you can even stir with your hand. Tear open the pouch and you'll, you will have ready to use seawater in a few minutes. Um, Great for people with small fish for nano aquariums. Excellent. Exactly. Great and, packaging too, by yeah, the way. Thank you very much. I mean, a, a lot of people, even in you know a 20, 30, 40 gallon tank, we use five gallon buckets to change the water. So you could mix up two or three five gallon buckets and you're ready to go. Excellent. The uh, larger consumer size is the 200 gallon box. And this one has four packs, each of 50 gallons. I've made an assumption that for larger aquariums, a lot of people either have a 50 gallon drum or a 100 gallon mixing bat. This way they have a nice even size package. Um, a lot of the salts that are out there in the bigger size will have a 200 gallon bucket or box and it's a single package. The advantage of having the multiple weights allows you uh, to use a fully homogenous mix so you're, you, know, you don't worry that as you're scooping that you get the, the correct uh, ratio of all the ions. And, uh, also, you use the entire contents of a bag, whether it's this one or that, that one, 
good sound effect there. Um, <laughs> The advantage there is any other package that's large, you open it up, the next time you open it, it may have taken in some moisture and that can affect the uh, composition of the salts, they interact with the moisture. Uh, so that's why I've done it this way. It's uh, now available, we are shipping it. We've been talking about this uh, for a couple of years now. I've always been telling people coming soon. I'm so glad here in Aquatic Experience to say we have it now. We're Excellent. making it. Yes. Great. So, Let's take a look at the stacks yeah, that Julian was telling us about earlier. I'll let you lead the way, sir. Maybe from the front. Sure. So, you know, if you're here, you know you can see the box, and then you're able to see the rocks. Come around that side. Yeah. Blow some of that away. Okay. You want to just do a pan on there? And then yeah. Can... Okay. You know, dur during the whole show, people are coming here and they're constantly playing with it and rearranging. Yeah, it's like Lego almost. Yeah. Making new, new ideas, new aquascapes. You can see how porous it is. There's a lot of places there for attaching coral. As I said, it can be used in, in fresh water as well. Now, Julian, are these man-made? They look like limestone, or is it something that's yeah. extruded and then cut apart? Great, great question. A lot of people looking at it think it's man-made or ceramic. It is natural limestone Very cool. uh, that is quarried in, in South Florida. And then the rocks are passed through a saw. So okay. it's sliced like bread. Nice. So a double cut. So and being limestone, this would also be great for anybody keeping African cichlids that yes. want a nice high pH. That is correct. And you could really aquascape with it too. That's great. I could just imagine in the reef tank, just put little frags in there. Yeah. I know, I, every time I walk by it, I want to play with it. It's, it's really opens up a lot of creativity. Yeah, yeah right there. Yeah. Ooh, that's endless, something interesting. Endless designs. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, even just the... Uh, you know, if you have a bare bottom, yeah. you can, you know, add these pieces on the bottom and create something where the fish are able to go in between. Okay. You know, just like uh, Star Wars, you know, there you how the little ships do that. There you go. Yeah. So, and it looks like it's sold in three different quantities? Yes, right. So there's a five pound, a 20 pound, and a 40 pound box. And, you know, basically the hobbyists might buy those as a complete package or the pet stores could buy the larger sizes, open them up and let people choose their own rocks. Oh, sure. You could go either way. Okay. Very good. Our intention in making the package like that would be that the hobbyists would, would buy the whole box knowing how much they wanted for their aquarium. Right. But it could Excellent. be either way. I see we have some substrate over here. Yeah, we do. So, um, for a number of years, we have been selling the aragonite sand as well as the uh, mineral-rich refugite. Uh, but people are starting to notice it. You know, it takes a while of advertising uh, for people to recognize that you have something yeah, new. Yeah, this has got to be great for people with refugiums. Yes. The um, refugite is rich in iron and minerals. Okay. Um, and so that makes it ideal for any plant in the aquarium. It can be used in fresh water, although we offer the refugite as a live sand in, in seawater. Yep. So most of the consumers uh, looking at refugite, they're considering it for their refugium, that's why the name, and they're growing palerpa or seagrass or mangroves. It, it's also beneficial to some of the LPS corals, in particular Ganyabora and Albiabora, Trachophilia, you know, flower pot corals need um, iron and manganese. Uh, this is something that is well known now and it's why we're successful keeping them now as opposed to 20 years ago when everybody wondered why flower pot corals only lived a few months and then perished. Right. And uh, I noticed there's, uh, there's it's, it's shipped with moisture. Yes, that is seawater. It's natural right. seawater. Um, and we add uh, Biopronto, which is a, a, a blend of natural microbes that decompose and uh, create the uh, nitrogen cycle, the nitrogen cycle. So we've 
looked at some aerobic bacteria in there, yeah. nitrifying yeah. bacteria, right? So uh, when you establish a refugium with this, you're helping to create your biological system. Yes. The, uh, the other substrates are aragonite sand from the Western Pacific. It's a, it's a nice, very clean uh, white sand with pink flakes in it. Uh, the pink is uh, you know, the skeletons of Omotrima is a type of uh, fret. Nice and bright when it's got a light over it. Too. That's correct. Uh, we we also have the seawater and biopronto in there. That's what you're seeing. Some of the culture in that. In addition to the sands, we have these uh, gravels. Basically, this is uh, coral skeletons that is used in calcium reactors. Reborn, the idea is that it's recycling the corals. As you dissolve them, it provides the uh, minerals, the calcium carbonate, and the corals need to grow. The uh, Remag is a uh, natural stone that's high in magnesium, and you mix it in a ratio of about one part Remag to nine parts Reborn in a calcium reactor, and that gives you a little extra boost of magnesium to maintain the magnesium. the risks of, of clogging um, so as the water as, as this might develop a film or algae growing on it the water level will rise but very very slowly it's easy to remove clean brush it off um, if you ever wanted to remove the overflow from the aquarium to clean it out with a brush or anything you just need to reduce the water level in the aquarium about a quarter of an inch below the holes and then you can unscrew it. It's basically like bulkhead fittings. Mm -hmm. It comes with O-rings. You know, the whole thing can come off, you can clean it, restore it. You can't do that with any typical overflow, especially not a bottom one that's challenging. Talk about easy access too, right yes. at the top of the aquarium. And then there's a special feature. In addition to, as I mentioned, it's really very quiet. They've patented, uh, I, I think, I wonder whether they discovered this by accident, I don't know, but they patented the fact that inside of this return line, the plastic uh, has a, what's the word, it's curved, it's like a sine wave. Okay. And as the pressurized water comes up through that, it exits making a pulsing action, so it creates waves. When you see this thing running, it, you, the first thing you think of, is there a mechanical device in there? And there isn't. It's just simply because there's a curve inside of that pipe. So there's not a moving part. There's no, no, moving no moving parts. No moving parts. But if the pulsing is reduced after time, what that means is you have a biofilm. And then all you need to do is run a, a foxtail brush in there and it, it restores it perfectly. Um, so easy maintenance, very easy, easy maintenance. access. There's another feature I didn't. Two things I didn't mention. One is that it will pass 660 gallons an hour. Wow! So that little That's bitty. That's a lot for that little pump. Yeah. So it could work on a large aquarium. People see this, they see it small, and they think, oh, nano aquarium. No, it's fine on a, you know, it could be on a hundred gallon tank or bigger. Um, 
The other feature I didn't mention is that in the mold, see how you can see through here that it's open? Mm -hmm. The reason for that is you can cut this with a hacksaw and separate oh, the in from the out. That's so you're able cool. to oh, put that. that so it's very customizable. Nice. It's customizable. That is very clever. That's right. Excellent. And you could have two outlets or two drains on one place and the outlets on the other. You could have one return, two drains, as you wish. So there is also a hose kit. Hose kit? Yeah. Nice. You know, talks about different installation methods. Um, the return hose is a silicone instead of the typical vinyl, so it basically will last forever. Um, and it's very flexible. The um, drain is a combination of silicone and I believe PVC, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, also very, very durable. Uh, there are, of course, vinyl hoses and other hoses and pipes that you could buy at a hardware store, but this one is designed to work easily and it slips right out of pipes. Yeah, very a lot, a lot less fuss. Yeah. Less fuss. Yep. All right. Very cool. Very good. Well, Julian, Thanks. we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks for the interview. My pleasure. Yeah, You're thanks welcome. For your time. And, and we apologize for the difficulty in sound. We were competing with the Sea Lion Show, so there's a little commotion around here. So, again, yes. we would like to thank Julian Sprung, and we hope to see you next time. See you next appreciate time. Appreciate your time. Aquatic experience. Thank All you. All right. Thank you. So, on the first day, we went around and showed some of the display tanks, and I don't think we did any yesterday for people who didn't weren't able to view us on the on day one so there's a few display tanks here some of them they're actually raffling off so we're just going to give you a quick glimpse at those and we're going to keep making our way around and again we don't really have a format so bear with us we're just kind of freestyling as we go and before i forget i would like to thank ian because he has the very precarious job of following me <laughs> with his camera and not tripping on anybody so hopefully we can get through this safely so come on let's All go right. check some things out Here's one of the tanks they're raffling off. Cool little tank with some Congo Tetras. I like this the rounded. This is a Flex, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Nice little bow in front. I like that. Want to feature on top there? We like this one. We spied this one yesterday. Little jellyfish tank. Pretty cool. I think it would make a great night light. It's about the size of a small trash can, just to give you an idea. And again, another peek at uh, the electric eels. <laughs> and uh, these guys look about three, three and a half feet long. Of course, they come out of the Amazon. They like the dark, murky waters, big predators. And it looks like they got some growing to do yet. He's going up to take a gulp of bear. So they do it right. So we are rolling fish there. They're just going to die, which is fine. That is the instrument. That tiny little eyes. Bring them to the States where they are. Very cool. Awesome. Here's another big tank that they're uh, doing a raffle on. It's a $2,200 value on this tank. Some gorgeous African cichlids in there. Tank number five. Again, this is another one they're going to raffle off. So what was, what was really cool when we got down here on Thursday night, um, you don't realize how much goes into this. So there's people bringing things in and setting things up and hoses everywhere and fish coming out of bags. So a lot of effort went into these display tanks that are just up for three, four days. So when the show closes at four today, 
everybody will be dismantling. I know Ian and I got our work cut out because we've got to take the display down. We've got our display fish tank and uh, pack it up and be on the road and hopefully be home sometime before midnight <laughs> to our family and loved ones. But uh, I can't complain. We're having a great yeah, time. Great time. Tank number four, they're raffling off for all you live bears out there. Beautiful sail fin Molly. So I think what we're gonna do now, we're gonna try and work our way over to Fluval. Uh, they've always been good to us and we love them. They've got some new tanks out over there, right? Oh, what is that tank? I remember it. So we'll see if we can get somebody here to show us around, give us some details and specs, but maybe until then we can show you some of the some more of the scapes. Ladies and gents, I got Chris here from Flubel. He's going to show us the latest and greatest on their lines, with their newer lines, and um, we'll take it away, Chris. Sure. Well, one of our newer tanks, our nano tanks, is uh, the Flex tank. So we have two versions. We have a black and a white, both in 15 gallons and 9 gallons, we have one over there. Uh, uh, unique design. Yeah, with, it with is. It. It's very cool. It's got a look to it, definitely. Yeah, and the cool thing, too, is like we actually studied it a lot to make sure that there, there wasn't really distortion because some with uh, curved glass you will right. get distortion on it. Yeah, being convex you do get that but not on this tank. Right. It looks great. So built-in filtration is all in the back. So there's plenty of room nice. for a heater. Um, easy access. Nice easy access. You have you a put your bio media down bio there. Media, carbon. Carbon. Foam. Return pump. The really cool feature on it is the LEDs built into the hood, the remote control with it, so you can have all different kind of uh, color variations. That's great, that. 80 colors. A little nano storm comes with a remote. Awesome. And it looks like one remote can kind of do... And it works for all of them. more than yes. one, that's great. So that's, that's awesome. The blaze you know, is great. And it's, the got a, it's got a nice small footprint. So I think you're getting right. a lot of tank up here, but yeah. you're not taking up a it's huge footprint. It's pretty deceptive, yeah. It looks like a lot, but it right. doesn't take up that much space. So, so this one we actually have a stand for, which is right here. But we also the 9 gallon, which is a great countertop. Same same features uh, as, as a larger size, 9, nine gallons. Pretty, it's a nice, smart little tank. That set up a lot, it's really nice. We also have uh, reintroduced the edge tanks to start 3.0 version. 3.0, okay. So uh, the glass is just still the same, so it's a nice cube effect of uh, floating, you know, the flo floating aquarium. I like how the edges light up. So the big feature, I'll turn this on, is we now have. 100% waterproof LED. Oh, very nice. good. Right, waterproof. So you have the touch sensor up here. The other component too is we made it that you don't put the hood on and off. We have a trap door. Whoop, like, yeah. Trap door for feeding. This sensor's out here for the light. You can even control your uh, filter okay. flow with, All right. from the outside. So coming for uh, two different sizes, you have a six gallon, 12 gallon. Okay. Two different colors, black and white. Black and white, six cool. gallon, 12 nice, gallon. Nice, clean lines, very yeah. modern look. Love it. And then Very the stylish. other great thing is our bug bite food. Let's go talk about that. So, 
majority of uh, tropical fish, their main source of protein is actually insect driven, so it's in the wild. So it kind of made sense to have that as the main source of protein in our uh, environment that we create for the fish. So it's uh, very good. So we use a black soldier fly larva. And, uh, a company called Interra actually is a harvester for us. Okay. So it's a nice facility. They have a great backstory be behind them, even just how they came up with it. Um, but it's, it's a great sustainable source of protein. Their life cycle is only about a month. Okay. So we harvest them at uh, 14 days when they're, when they're at their, their and maximum they're prime nutrition. And peak. And so then we uh, dry them. They go to Hagen Industries where we own our own uh, extruder. Okay. So much like dog food, the extruding process, you, you, you're not losing as much of the nutrient levels. We, ask, we still do add some salmon for omega-6 and, and 3, um, beta-carotene, some of the, so the Fleco formula, we have peas and alfalfa as the fiber source. Yep, so, so you got fiber sources, you've got color enhancers. Well, we just released protein. the color enhancer, so it's, again, we got some shrimp in there, and yeah. which is, as we know, is a natural color enhancer, and also uh, the beta carotene. Good. Well, as you know, we love the bug bites. You yes. guys were very yes. generous. You gave us a huge box of them. And I know when people have been ordering freshwater fish, we have been sending samples of bug bites. And I've been using them for about the last month with my yeah. cichlids, and they yeah. love them. They yeah. do. They really enjoy them. So, good stuff. That's pretty much it for the, for the newer uh, products that are out on the market. All right. So, great. Well, so, Chris, we appreciate hey, your time. Thank you, Eric. Great thanks seat. for uh, thanks a lot, Eric. <laughs> letting us pick or your brain. Chris, that's right. and yes. Again, we got some noise there. They've been doing raffles. Lots of raffles. <laughs> so... Lots of activity down here today. Uh, we're going to go take a look at some more aquariums. And then for all you reptile lovers out there, I am a reptile lover. We've got somebody we're going to pay a visit to. Show us some good creepy crawlies. Hi, Susan. So maybe we'll go look at the reptiles first because we love to talk to ProClear but we've got all the raffle yeah. ruckus behind us. So let's let that die down over. and let's go check out these reptiles. We've got Crosstown so Exotics. So, I've got Mike here from Crosstown Exotics. Uh, this morning we dropped by and chit-chatted and shared our love of reptiles. So Mike, what did you bring in today? I, we have a variety of different stuff. Um, trying to stick to the aquatic theme, we've got some turtles. Uh, we have a green anaconda, and then uh, we got some salamanders and like frogs and toads. Uh, but if we want to take a look at our green anaconda Gamora, sure. we just get the clippers while snip the cage open. We lock her up this way, nobody slides the glass open on us. Oh, let me get the key real quick. <laughs> so we're, we're going to try and wake up the beast here, and hopefully she's uh, got a good temperament. She looks to be about six or seven feet long, so we'll get all the details and specs from Mike here in a second. Let's go look at that alligator snapper. Yeah. Something special here happening too. So while uh, Mike's getting the snake out, we'll take a look at this alligator snapping turtle, which is oh, so awesome. Nice. And looks like apparently it's photo ready too, right in the corner here. I if you could zoom in on those claws. Very cool. Mike, how old you say the turtle was? About eight. Okay. Um, I'll pull the turtle on. Sure. It's all right. This is live. We're just winging it in yeah. prep too. So again, I don't know if you were able to hear out there, Mike said the turtle is approximately eight years old. How big was the turtle when you got it? It fit in the palm of my hand. Palm of the hand. I'll pull it by you guys take a closer now, look here. I know alligator, snapper, alligator snappers aren't your everyday turtle. Do you need a permit for this kind of animal? Yes, in the state of Illinois you have to have a, um, it's a threatened or endangered species permit. You just fill out the paperwork, uh, you send it into the DNR with uh, proof of life where the, the turtle came from, okay. and it, it's pretty simple. You know, yeah. they don't charge for it or anything. Come here, buddy. So I think uh, the, for the majority, most of the reptile 
owners out there are very responsible. Yes, so yes. Look at the gape on that. So if you guys can see that pink little tongue, that alligator, that snapping turtle is going to sit in the water with its mouth open and wiggle that tongue like a little worm and the unsuspecting fish is going to go up and bite that and it's going to get bit in return. <laughs> exactly, yes. Wow. It, it is a beautiful animal. Thank you. Very cool. It's like our own personal dinosaur. Yeah. I, just love, I just love all the little eruptions and everything on its legs. And those claws are something else. Yes, those help them blend into the environment. Help them look like a dead log or a, yeah. a rock. Yeah, I could see this thing just blending right into a stump. Yeah, I mean, you like, when he was little, I had his tank all planted and everything, and he would blend in so well. Look at that eek. Wow. I want to say they have the second strongest bite power in the animal yeah, kingdom. Yeah, don't want your finger going yeah. in there. So... What kind of enclosure do you have at home for this? Right now, he's in about a 100-gallon agriculture tub okay. uh, with just some big logs and things in there. Gotcha. And we do a combination of, like, uh, we get, like, uh, frozen fish like tilapia or we'll do, like, cocktail shrimps, things like that. And then he gets a pelleted diet. He gets a Missouri croc diet. Um, and then I will throw in fruits and vegetables. He really likes mangoes, cool. watermelon, pumpkin. He kind of takes a bite here and there, but... I gotta say, those folks at Missouri, they make food for every animal under yeah, the sun. Yeah, we use quite a bit. We use uh, tortoise chow, uh, turtle chow, the croc diet, herbivore. So what's this guy's name? Does it have Rocco. 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 Yeah. Hey, Rocco. He's like my baby. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, let's uh, get back in the water. Let's see what else we can play with here without getting our. our I can bring out. out. Uh, I have Phil, and Phil's a Burmese python. Got him in, uh, he was taking a break here because he was working with a lot of kids earlier. Diamondback terrapin. Beautiful. So, Mike, do terrapins come from the East Coast? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to say from the Gulf all the way to New Jersey. Okay. This is Phil. 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 Phil's our Burmese python. He's one of our smaller ones. Yeah. Uh, we got him as, from someone basically they couldn't care for him anymore. They said, hey, you know, I just don't really want this snake anymore. Can you guys take him? Um, he's roughly four or five years old. We yeah. got him. He was still really tiny. And um, he's super chill. He's probably one of our he's, best. Uh, he's pretty tame for a Burmese. Yeah. I know sometimes they can be sketchy. It looks like he must have shed recently. He's, just he's got actually a, getting ready to. He's got a feel his beautiful sheen to him. Wow. Yeah, but he's one of our, uh, one of our best educational animals because he's super tame. laid back, lets people pet him. No, uh, no signs of aggression at all. Wow, beautiful animal. Thank you. Awesome. Are we able to get the pixie frog out? Yeah, I can get the, I can get a jelly bean out for you. Jelly bean the pixie frog. <laughs> these are, what we're gonna look at now is uh, African bullfrog or pixie frog, and these are one of my favorites. Some of these things, in captivity when they're fed right, they can get the size of a dinner plate. Nice. So, there's Jelly Bean right there. I think he's got a pretty good life. He just sits there and he gets fed. Yep. <laughs> yeah, let me slip the cage open all over. Come here, so I can see you guys see a gator to it, so. I'm gonna get Jelly Bean out here. You gotta be careful, because if you get your hands too close to his mouth, he might try to taste you. Yeah, you might think you're some sort of unsuspecting rodent. Yeah. So, and that's what he eats right now is small rats, actually. So there's our African bullfrog. These guys eat everything from other frogs to snakes to small rodents. Very cool. And, uh, Mike, we were talking earlier. How do you sex these frogs? So underneath him here in his armpits, it's orange. Um, if it was a female, their stomach is solid white. So only males have this orange coloration. Uh, and that's the easiest and quickest way to tell on these frogs. And also the males get significantly larger than females. Like, a female would maybe get about this size. As where he's still growing, and he might get, you know, he could cover a dinner plate almost when he's a, a full-grown adult. <laughs> he's awesome. Yeah. I'm sorry, what's that? Uh, 10, 15 years? Yeah. He looks friendly. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, he likes to give kisses. <laughs> he's got a great name, Jelly yeah. Bean. I got him when he was this big, so oh, wow. kind of was fitting for him at the time. <laughs> You gotta, That's jelly bean. What do you, what do you feed him? He's on rodents right now, small rats. Small rats? Yep. Oh, yeah. Live ones? No, pre-killed. So it's really nice with him is I can just unthaw a rat out of the freezer, wiggle in front of him, and he'll grab it. Uh, he also gets large roaches, and then I give him uh, night crawlers, uh, and he has taken small quail, like little quail chicks. Really? Yeah, he's not uh, picky at all. 
Oh, you want to hold them? Yeah, yeah. go for it. So, this is for my wife out there. I'd love to bring one of these home someday, Marilyn. <laughs> what do you think? Isn't he cute? <laughs> This is great. I think it might be a no. I feel like a kid in a candy shop. Yeah. There's Jelly Bean. The picture. All right, we're gonna put Jelly Bean back. Hi, Jelly Bean. Want to get a quick picture? Colin. <laughs> yeah. Give me that key for Gamora. Awesome. All right. Who else do you guys want to take a look at? Oh, oh let's show, show us the Mata Mata. Sure. So. So, in here we got a Mata Mata turtle. These are beautiful. And uh, Mike, where, where would these come from in the wild? They're from South America. Uh, they live in the rainforest. They like very shallow, um, like slow moving streams. They like to sit like where there's a lot of dead leaves, dense vegetation, um, and water that's really high in tannins. So it looks like tea. And they just kind of sit really still, try to look like the environment. And then when fish walk by, or swim by, I should say, uh, they just suck them in like a big vacuum. So, similar to the alligator snapping turtle, ambush yes. predator. Yes, yes. Um, and he's going to get significantly larger. I mean, he'll probably get a 10 uh, to 14 inch shell. Okay. And they get a very heavy body. But if you look, he's got all these little projections and things off of the side of his head here that kind of help him blend in. Oh, yeah. Awesome. And their nose is like this so that he doesn't really have to stick his whole head out of the water. Just that little snout comes out. He gets a breath of air and goes back under. And it kind of looks like a leaf, too. Yeah. Right now, out of water, he's kind of closed up a little bit. If we get him back in here, you can kind of see his head, all the things on the side of it there. And then uh, over here, we've got a caiman lizard. And I am a lizard lover, and these guys are very closely related to tegu. So for all you tegu fans out there, it's kind of like a cross between a lizard and an alligator. I can pull him out for you guys. Yeah. His Sorry. name is Drax. Drax. That's great. There, buddy. If you guys look at his head and look at his jaws, very powerful because he can eat land snails and crush things. Yeah, he's a beautiful yeah. animal. It's like a dinosaur. It's awesome. Yeah, if he's got that kind of uh, crocodile like back, his crocodilian scales there. He's semi aquatic. He spends quite a bit of time in the water. Yeah, they do. Definitely. Now, do, do males get a redder head than females? I believe or? so, yeah. So I'm not 100% on his gender now because he's so small, but I do know the males get that bright red head. Females might be a little duller, but two, he hasn't been under his like heat lamp, you know, where he's yeah, nice and vibrant. Right. Are they like tagus where they have the cloacal spurs between the thighs? Um, I know they do get some of that stuff, but I don't okay. uh, know if he's too small to see any yeah, of that, you know? He looks a little young. Yet. Well, very cool. Um, Colin's got Gamora out over All there. All right. Well, let's, let's, let's see the, uh, the main feature here. All right. So this is a green anaconda. Uh, her name is Gamora. She's about four years old. Uh, green anacondas are the largest body species of snake in the world, uh, reaching a few hundred pounds as adults, uh, getting around 20 feet long. Um, spend most of their time in the water because they're such a large body species of snake, it's kind of hard for them to move around as quickly as they would in the water. Um, being, being as large as they are. She is pretty tame for an anaconda, right? Tame. This is a captive bred species of snake. Um, normally, when snakes come in, so even like your common ball pythons, Burmese pythons, when they were first brought into the pet trade, they were very, uh, they, they weren't as tolerant to people as they are now. As you captive breed stuff. I think she's whispering sweet nothings in my ear. As you captive breed stuff, you kind of breed the wild out of it. So yeah. this is an animal that's been captive bred and is well adapted to being held. So there's also yellow anacondas, there correct? Is. Yes. Does one get bigger than the other? Yes. Green anacondas get much bigger than the yellows. Um, yellows max out at around 12 to like 13 feet. Um, green anacondas can easily get into their 20s. Wow. Yep. Okay. Wow. So uh, difference between um, pythons and, and anacondas is that they're part of the boa family, and boas have live young. So a female green anaconda can have, to have up to 100 babies at a time. Wow. Um, wow. She's pretty awesome. Yeah. She is awesome. You want to say yeah. this another cool adaptation as well is that in the you know murky waters in, in South America, they've got this greenish coloration. So they blend right in. But when they go into some clearer areas, uh, South America is home to some of the largest freshwater fish in the world. And so these guys become prey to them. Well, they've learned to actually camouflage with the sun. So if they're swimming at the top of the water and some fish looks up, they blend right in. It's, yeah. it's quite a Just cool like adaptation. How a lot of fish have white bellies. Exactly. And likes you. <laughs> yeah. This snake likes me. Likes my warmth anyway. Yeah. 
beautiful animal. Thank you. Very, very cool. And Colin, where is Crosstown Exotics for all our viewers yeah. out there? Uh, so we're located in Mokina, Illinois. Uh, that's just the southwest suburbs of Chicago. Um, so guys, not far. Not right far at all. Literally. Yeah, right in the neighborhood here. So Excellent. Yeah. Wow. No, these are our pets. Very, very cool. <laughs> and if you've never held a snake before, what you don't realize, they're not slimy. They're very smooth. And they're solid muscle. Though. So this girl has got some weight to her. How much would you say she weighs? Let's say 15 to 20 pounds. Yeah, I'd say 15 to 20. Oh, there. She's whispering sweet nothings again. Yeah. <laughs> so. But now that she's claimed you, she's yeah. your, your hers. <laughs> she's coming home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely a crowd pleaser. Very cool. Yeah, that's what we want to see. Get yeah. a look at these guys. These are our uh, giant hissing cockroaches. They're one of the largest cockroaches in the world, actually. And these are two males we're looking at. Um, we know they're males because they have these projections on their thorax here. And contrary to uh, what a lot of people think is, roaches aren't all gross and disgusting. These guys are actually important decomposers in nature. So in Madagascar, they're going to eat dead logs, dead wood, dead leaves, things like that. And uh, just break things down. Oh, buddy, want to crawl into my hand? And when they're scared, they will make a hissing noise. So right now they're kind of used to us handling them, but sometimes if you just grab them right away, it's like tss, tss, pretty loud actually. Very nice. Thanks. We do a lot of bug presentations and stuff as well. We got tarantulas, millipedes, all kinds of neat stuff. Very cool. That's awesome, Mike. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. Well, I think that was a pretty awesome segment, Mike. We want to thank you again for yeah, your time. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. We love your critters. And uh, Colin, hands off to you. Of thank thanks, you. Guys. Gamora. Thank you, thanks, guys. Maybe when when she's back here in another year or two, she'll be another five feet longer. Take a couple of you guys to hold her. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're going to keep moving on. And again, uh, just bear with us here. We have no format. We're just kind of doing some wandering. We want to get over to ProClear, but there's a big crowd over there right now. Yeah. So. We're going to keep on moving. Plenty of other things to see. There she is, making your friends. <laughs> so I think what we will do, we'll show you some more of the aquascaping, just because it's so incredible. I think I spent a good hour and a half here this morning before the event started today. Just really taking it all in. And it looks I mean, like they, they have done the awards here. I see some yeah, oh yeah. Here. Yeah, third place here goes to... This aquascape, very nice. Beautiful. Lots of creativity, lots of great ideas. I love the way the moss is growing on the branches yeah, there. That's nice. Excellent. Some shrimp there up on that log. Very cool. This one really caught my eye too. <laughs> Surprising they didn't win an award, but that's okay. It's still a really great design. And we love those Praycox rainbows in there. If anybody's ever kept those, you know they can be a touchy fish, and those are good size for prey cocks. They're just beautiful. Over here, we got best in show. Best in show, nice. Here we got the best in show. Oh, and these look like little juvenile prey cocks rainbows. Very cool. And we got a cutie with an ice cream cone here. <laughs> Even kids are Jeez, digging it. Horrible. What's your name? Paige? And what did you like to see down here today? The fish? This is Paige, everybody. Looks like she's enjoying some ice cream. Say hi, you're on Facebook Live right now. Say hi. <laughs> she's got her ice cream cone, she's good. <laughs> Can't blame her. Really nice setup here. Cool. I'm from Chicago and Daddy's from Chicago. All right. Go to Chicago. Very cool. Let's see if we can right. skip ahead here some of these other escapes. You guys enjoy the show. All right, thanks a lot. You're welcome. No winner here, but still a really impressive setup. Yeah. I like the substrate. It's almost like a fine sand. Love the rock. Yeah, the rock has so much texture. It looks like it's got enough for the moss to grab onto. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> 
second place here. Uh, this is very cool as well. Beautifully done. And these were all just set up the other day. We did have a request to show some uh, saltwater fish, so we'll definitely look for that as we're uh, moving yeah. along here. There's definitely a lot of that here. Good. Okay. I think there's some right around the corner, oh, so yeah. bear with us. We got some here. And yeah, we saw this one yesterday, but it's always a cool form. Yep. Right got some green chromis, some skunk clowns. I believe those are amber jacks. If I'm wrong out there, maybe somebody can politely correct me. I like how they're just kind of schooling at the top mm -hmm. there. It's nice. We've got our firefish, some pajama cardinals in there. A couple of kessels running up there. Very nice. There's some pretty cool fish over here. We dropped over here this morning. Hey, guys. We were talking hey, there. To hey, there. guys. Here's Donato again. Donato, nice Eric. Nice um, Donato's got a pretty interesting tang in there. Why don't you show us what you got in your tank tonight? All right, buddy. We got a golden heart trigger right here. Uh, White tail tang. White tail tang, golden heart trigger. Mustard tang. Mustard tang. And then you got a golden, golden buffer there. Yeah, golden dog face. Everybody loves those. It's a pretty color. Yeah, this is what caught my eye this morning. Mustard tang. Huh? Mustard tang. Very cool fish. Yeah, Beautiful. definitely. How big is this tank? It's a 180. 180. 180. All right. Yeah, it does the job, doesn't it? <laughs> Very awesome. Cool. These guys here are cool too. Yeah, look at those scorpion, scorpion fish. Oh. They are beautiful. Now, how much bigger do those get, Donato? They get, they actually grow pretty big, uh, about 12, 14 inches. Wow. Yeah, you'd have to have some pretty big fish if you're going to keep those guys with them, because they will try to take out anything. They're not mean, they're just hungry. And they are venomous, correct? Yes. The dorsal spines? This guy here. Very cool. Very cool. Donato, thank you so hey, much for your time. Thanks, Enjoy thanks. the rest of yep. the show. See you guys. Take care. All right, we're going to look for some more saltwater fish. Again, bear with us. We have no format. We're just freestyling it. So even though it's the last day and it's about three o'clock, you can see there's still a fair amount of people here. Um, all sorts of activity. It's been great. Let me take a look at this one. Not salt water, but really nice little setup. It's from Genural. Beautiful bent glass. Let's go over there. All right. So this is pretty cool. Some for the kids. Looks like you got a touch pond. Starfish. I see some sea bay monos in there. Looks like we got some kelp. You guys having fun? Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite in there? Starfish. Anemone. Anemone is cool. Very cool. All right. Got some nice looking corals in there. I know we've been by here a few times, but should we take another quick look? Yeah, again, I spent some time in front of these tanks today, just kind of. So here we got fourth place. Get some nice photos, and just some nice eye candy. Let's see if I can find the winner. I don't know, I don't see the winner. They're all really, really great. 
got a winner over I here? I see a blue ribbon up there. Okay. There we go, best in wow, show. Wow, that is just fantastic. You know, I, this one really did catch my eye when I was going. <laughs> and when we stopped by this one yesterday too. This has the Toucan Tetris in it. That's how I remember it. Does this one have the puffers in it too? I don't think so. No, I think I it was a different one. in there. Yeah, some, of these, some of these really have some... Uh, they share a lot of characteristics in some ways, but uh, each one of them is still very unique. Very cool. This is cool. I'll talk like about it. thinking outside of the box. I love it. And I believe that the gentleman yesterday told us these were 7.8 gallons? Yes, 7.8. Wow. It, it's deceiving. They look bigger. I would have thought they were yeah. 9 or 10 gallons. I thought they were closer to 10. Ian, here's your puffers. Oh, there we go. That's the puffer. That is about as cute this as you nice get. This one too, yeah. Those are cute little puffers. Cool. This is that bicolored wood. I love it. I'm gonna have to get some of that for my aquarium. Yeah. Very nice. There's home tree avatar. <laughs> yeah. This one got third place. Right in the cell. Beautiful design. Nice. All right, we're gonna keep moving here. So again, we have a lot of booths down here, and it was a lot of setup. And I believe we had uh, Zetlite to talk to, right? We wanted to stop by Zetlite and see how. Yeah, did we pass them already? I think uh, they're right over there, actually. All right, let's go talk to them. So for all you reef enthusiasts, um, yeah, nice saltwater aquarium over here. Yeah, we, we happened to cross that light yesterday and they've got some great equipment. Here's a beautiful tank too. This is another tank that I keep walking by and just kind of staring at for, you know, 5, 10, 20 minutes at a time. Really nice. I'm going to see if I can grab somebody and get a little demo on some of these lights. Yeah, Mr. William, he's coming over. Can they give us a demo? William? Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you guys. Hey, we're showing off some of your impressive equipment. Why don't you uh, talk us through, tell us what you got out that's new, what's hot, and uh, what's innovative for Zetlite. What's new for us is actually the big UFO over here. Just getting it out. This has been around for a little bit. You've seen it all over the show. Yeah. Everybody's got it. Um, I like to call it our Kessel Killer. It's 96 oh. watts. It's four channels of controllability. It's got the huge heat sink. The whole top is a heat sink, so you never have to worry about cooling issues. Nice. Um, it's got a nice, clean color to it because of the way that the diode is manufactured. All the colors are mixed in together, so you never get a disco effect with it. Okay. Is that a quartz lens, or what do you have for a lens there? It is a quartz lens with a like a chrome reflector on it. Okay, very good. Yeah, Ian and I noticed these lights all over the show yesterday, and we just, we love the aesthetic of them. Yeah. It, it's aptly named the UFO. Really it's, cool. It's very cool, and they're, they're very intense. Very intense. They are. Actually, this is the new light that we've got coming out at the beginning of the year. So it give is, us the specs on this one, Well, This one is 140 watts, four channels of controllability, comes app-enabled out of the box. Um, here. We'll run through some of the colorations on it. So William's going to do a demo for us, and then like most of them, looks like it's Wi-Fi controllable. It it's got a nice Very app cool. On your it's phone. got a nice app. Four channels. But here, I'll tell you the kicker with this light that I really enjoy that you don't see anymore. 
is the white. That's just white. That's 100% white, no blue, no reds, nothing in there. It's got that nice, crisp, clean color that you never really see anymore. You know, and crisp is a good way. It's not blaring, yes. but it's very crisp. Yeah. And it's got the blues that just make everything pop. It's got the fourth channel is UV. The third is red, so it just kind of fills in that nice, warm color to it. And also with that light, there is an app that allows you to control LEDs, wave makers, protein skimmers, return pumps, dosing pumps, every macroalgae lights. Very nice. They're coming out with temperature control, uh, feeders. There is a camera that you can use with it. Nice. That is a very cool function. Yeah, we're trying to get the functionality of an Apex without having to spend a thousand dollars for an extra peripheral. Sure. So. Wow. It's nice, clean, makes everything happen. And most of the equipment comes with Wi-Fi built in, so there's no extra purchase involved. The only thing that doesn't is the LEDs and the wave maker, just because they're so modular. Sure. Like if you had the Wi-Fi controller in every one, you would either have a convoluted, cluttered screen when you were trying to control everything, or you would have a bunch of small devices that you didn't need. So for $100 retail on the, on the Wi-Fi controller, you can control the pumps and the lighting. Very awesome. Cool. And, and getting back to this light, is this light out for sale now? or It will be around the first of the year. So it's this in is, production. Yeah, this is the prototype. There are two that exist in the world. Wow. One is right here, one is the satellite. Very China. cool. And uh, just so everybody knows out there, this is definitely a line that uh, Foster's and Smith is looking on picking up. So hopefully we will have these available to you as well after the first of the year or once they become available. Yeah, that and the UFO I think you guys have really shown interest in. Yeah, I know I, know I saw the I know UFO I demo come back. I think we're going to be fighting over that one. Yeah. I think Ian might end up with that one. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> So, nice. William, earlier we were talking about your protein skimmers. I had no idea you guys made protein skimmers, and they're very cool looking. You got a minute to talk about those? We actually sold the one that we had sitting here. Obviously, they're in high, high demand, huh? Yeah. Yeah, they are. Well, like, I, we couldn't I guess even that's keep a good them thing. Inside. If you sold the one we were going to demo, yeah. that's all right. But let's take a look at what we got here. So tell us what we have for materials and uh, just ease of use, and setup. Everything is internal pumps. They come mounted in there with the RH2 Pro line. So it's all acrylic construction. Um, these are DC pumps, so give you that extra bit of fine controllability okay. that you don't get with AC. And it saves you some money on your exactly. electric bill. Definitely, definitely. But we've got everything that starts at 65 gallons with this one and we've got one that goes all the way up to 300. Very cool. So the tubing on here, are we talking silicone, vinyl? Yes, silicone. Silicone. That's the way to go, isn't it? Yeah. It doesn't break down as easily. I mean, it will over time eventually, but you don't have to worry about vinyl cracking. Yeah, definitely better than vinyl. And then you don't have to look at unsightly algae yep. or sludge or anything else in there. It's a pretty good sized collection cup. It is. I mean, you're probably looking at, in the system this is rated for, I think that one is rated for 125 gallons. You're maybe cleaning the pump once a week. Okay. Yeah, so that it's sounds not one about of those the norm. Where you have to do it every two to three days. Yeah, and then you can hook up your discharge. Exactly. Excellent. Wow. Very good. Let's talk real quickly about your tanks. We've got this acrylic tank. It's made by uh, Macro Aqua. It, it's not going to be a reef tank, uh, but it will keep some softies alive in there. It'll be great for the first fish tank um, or somebody who doesn't have a lot of space that they don't want to. Or a simple tank. aquarium. Yeah. I love it. It's a great design. Pop the hood. Here's your return intake. It's nice. How many gallons is this one? That one's about 22. 22? The same so, with this one right here. This is the marine space that is manufactured by satellite, the same ones who make the lights. And this one is glass, correct? This one is glass, curved glass, low iron. Yeah, um, and that, that's the way to go. It low is. iron and curved just shows it off. I think this is very sexy. I love the light. Is this it, glass too? It is glass. Very it's cool. Reef capable. It's reef capable. Cold. All right. How many watts are we talking up here? That one is 36 watts. 
You know, up top here, this is cool. We've got form and function. Mm -hmm. The fins disperse the heat. And it's got a nice aesthetic to it. Yeah, it does. It's got, it's rounded, so it all ties in together. Very nice. Like it. Awesome. Well, William, we really appreciate your time. Thank you guys Enjoy for stopping by. Enjoy the body. rest of the show. Yeah. You're welcome. All right. And Have we'll a good one, guys. we'll see you next time mm -hmm. around. All right. Okay. Thanks, Eddie. Well, there you went. <laughs> I lost oh, him for yeah. a second, guys. All right. And, uh... Yeah, uh, yesterday we apologized, our internet cut out a couple times, and uh, Miss uh, King and Queen Cichlid might have got cut off, but it was fun talking to them. So we're going to keep moving on down here. I think, just for grins, we got to go back and see the giant golden pleco one more time. Oh, yeah. Surprisingly, there weren't a whole lot of plecos down here this year. But the one we found yesterday, this guy makes up it's for Definitely it. the biggest one here. Hopefully nobody bought him. Yeah. Let's see if we can get a shot of him. So he's still here. Oh, there he is. So this is a Hypostomus lutus. Oh, Show him look off. Look at that. That is some awesome stuff. So, Ian, I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. This is the first time no, I've seen one. first time for myself as well. So, apparently what we found out about these is they have three color stages. When they're juveniles, they kind of look like a mustard spot or a gold nugget, and then they transition out of that, and then this is their final phase. This looks like gold armor plating. And Ian, let's show everybody at home how much this Pleco is if somebody's interested in them. Looks like they dropped the price a bit. Yeah, two cents. <laughs> Very beautiful though. Brutal really good. Alright, we're gonna roll back down the aisle. Uh, the folks from the Chicago Cichlid Association were here, so we're gonna go see if we can talk to them. They also have some beautiful fishing as well. Maybe you can do a quick pan along this wall. Let's do a quick hit and run. Let's drag it all that stuff. Yeah. Peacock fans, got the dragon bloods. Beautiful gold severum up here. Look at that face. <laughs> All right. Very cool. Let's take a look at this big fresh rider over here, real quick. Very cool. Looks like we've got some festivums in there and all sorts of different kinds of rainbows. We got a big tank of glowfish over here. So we've got everything from glowing tetras to Daniels to barbs. I think there's a shark. That is really cool. Very nice. We'll say hi to our friends over there. What's up, Eric? What's going on, guys? <laughs> we keep coming back to the dragon skull. Very nice. Let's give a quick shot of our booth, huh? Shameless plug here. You know what? Let's tell them about the salt really quick. So our own special blend of salt is on sale right now on the website. We've got the 180 gallon mix or the 200 gallon mix, and I believe they're both about ten dollars off. So I think at this point they're $54.99 on the website. So, so one of the other people behind the scenes who's actually working right now as we speak is Mr. Kelvin Fujikawa. So everybody say hi to Kelvin. We, 
we give Calvin lots of love. Um, without Calvin and Ian, you wouldn't have meat. So I am very grateful for their help and their hard work. And of course, he's working as usual. So we got the Chicago Cichlid Association over here. So we'll see if we can get Jim's attention here. Hello, folks. Wait until my president gets back. He's at the raffle. Well, while we're here, we're just going to take a peek at some of your fish. These are all going to be auctioned tonight, 7 o'clock upstairs. So we are at the booth of the Greater Chicago Cichlid Association. We got some different types of Africans. And like Jim told me, all of these fish are going to be for auction later on, 7 o'clock tonight upstairs. These guys are pretty over here. I know we've got some trophies up top. I'm a little rusty on my African cichlid species, so I'm not even going to venture to guess. And these are all Zet lights on top. That's why we got a lot of intensity. Again, just a cool looking light, aptly named a UFO. Down here we got some really interesting ones too. Beautiful fish. I like the sand bottom, get some good contrast. Try and get back down to pro player. So we're going to work our way down to ProClear and maybe we'll give you a quick peek at some of the American Cichlid Associations. They had a contest over the weekend. I know we've stopped by here once or twice, but there's some great fish in here. Got a nice pike cichlid there. I don't know if our favorite got sold or if he went home. There was a nice fish cichlid in there. But here's our first place winner. Got our nice flower horn. Uh, we got a lot of glare, so we apologize for that. It's beautiful by Fasciatus. Look at the coloring on him. Man, is he gorgeous. Beautiful fish. And we got our, our wild Ultim Angel down here. <laughs> Doesn't want to talk to us right now. He's got his back turned. I don't blame you too. I want to go home too, buddy. He's seen enough people. All right, we've still got a big crowd down there, but we got to stop at ProClear because they have some beautiful aquariums, um, pretty innovative and very modern in design. So that's a good one. These are both churches. We better work around this way. So we are over here at ProClear and we've got a couple different columns. This one's pretty unique. It's, it's oval. These are all acrylic. So the nice thing about these is they're very lightweight, easy to move around. How's it going? Here we got Mr. Nick Larry. Hey, Nick, how are you? you? Good, good, good. Tell us about these beautiful aquariums. I know we got some noise going on in back. Sorry, but I'm going to let Jeff do that. If it's okay with you guys. <laughs> Jeff's gonna hey, Jeff, I'm losing my voice here, so I'm just going to step in on that Jeff, right now. Eric from Live Aquaria, how are we doing today? Doing well. Welcome to Aquatic Experience That's in Chicago. Right. We've been by here a couple times. This is the first time we're able to show the folks at home your beautiful aquariums, and they are gorgeous. So we love love to just have a couple minutes of your time. Sure, yeah, let's talk about that. We have the uh, the clear line with us today. Uh, these are the acrylic, uh, acrylic aquariums. Uh, the smaller units are set up with filtration oh, wow. Look at that. on the top side. And uh, we sell the unit as a complete unit with the, uh, the pump, the light, obviously the filter. You can see there's a drain built into the uh, 
the bottom of the tank right there. And on the back side of the unit, there's a little trap door to go ahead and uh, make it easy for water changes. Just drain the water right out through the hose. Uh, so the smaller units all have that type of setup. If you take a look at the bigger units, like the cylinder behind you, this one's over here is 53, and it has a big brother that's 103 gallons. I would have guessed that's 90 to 100 gallons. Yeah, it's very it shows well, right? So uh, this one has the sump built into the bottom part. So certainly able to handle the uh, salt water, fresh water. Yeah, that's nice. And if you wanted to uh, upgrade the lighting, you could even go ahead and get uh, corals into that situation. And do, you, do you guys manufacture the sump as well? Yeah, it's our uh, our sump design right there, absolutely. Uh, if you take a look back over on the table, if we want to see some of the uh, the sumps themselves. That real quick. I've never done your sumps. Have you really done Yeah. I mean, there's the this price unit price. is the uh, Freedom 4-in-1 series. Uh, the great thing about this yeah. series is it has the built-in refugium area. And one of our patented items is the uh, water flow control gate. So this is going to dictate whether or not you're going to be sending all the water into the refugium or if you just want a true trickle flow and you can adjust that gate up and down accordingly, set it wherever you would like. Another feature of this unit, of course, is our water canal feature with our chemical media cartridges. So uh, we have these set up where you can go ahead and put in variety of different substrates okay. and they just sit right down here in the water canal where all the water has to pass through so it'll naturally pick that up. Easy access, simple to that design but it looks solid. It looks like it's yes. not going to break down over years. Yep. I see we've got a nice skimmer in there. We've got right. three socks in there. Board management, uh, room for the probes, rooms for the doser and then uh, another part of the patent is the bubble diffuser tubes bringing the uh, the tank water in down into the bubble diffuser tubes to get all the micro bubbles out so it'll flow better through your filter socks and then our emergency overflow slits in case the socks are ever plugged the water will still flow through the unit not create a mess for you so beautiful beautiful unit this is the uh freedom four in one series i think we're running low on battery power so we want to get to the pinnacle get to the big boy let's take a look over here at the glass series Winner is 7299. This is a beautiful aquarium. Especially if you set it up as, as a peninsula or partition. I love when you can see through an aquarium. Yes. Such a dramatic effect. And that's how this one's exactly designed to be, is the see-through, kind of the room divider, if you will. Uh, it's got a control panel built in for the lighting, monitors, yeah, temperature. Nice. Uh, you can change the different color schemes happening with the light. And this one comes with a built-in uh, sump right down here. So you will see. Hey, Jeff, how big is this aquarium? This one's 85 gallons. Again, it's deceiving. Right. You know, yeah. It reminds me of the old 110 high. Yeah, yeah. So it uh, shows well. It gives you a, kind of just gives you a great perspective on being able to show off some of the larger fish. Um, and this whole unit comes, you know, all is one package. The only thing missing would be the pump and you get to decide what kind of flow rate you want for your setup, so you choose your own pump, but it has easy access for everything we do. Uh, what, what's, the, what's the material here, Jeff? This is beautiful. Yeah, it's this gonna be acrylic. Acrylic? Yeah. That's very acrylic high top. gloss. Yeah, absolutely. It's very, very modern. Yeah. So awesome. it shows beautifully, and believe it or not, this is uh, one of the smaller sizes, so <laughs> uh, only about four feet long, but we have others that are all the way up to six feet long. That's so great. if you can imagine, uh, we get into some very large sizes for the glass clear product line. Excellent. Yeah. Well, Jeff, we really, really appreciate your time. We want to sign off before we're cut off by Thanks the battery. Yes, really indeed. appreciate it. Hope and, everybody uh, enjoyed the show. Yeah, we look yeah. forward to seeing you guys next time. Indeed. Thank so, you so much. Awesome. So, hey, I think that's going to wrap it up for us here at the Aquatic Experience. And if you're not able to come up to Rhinelander next week for our open house, be sure to check us out because your dynamic duo, myself and Ian, are going to be there again doing some live streaming. So thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in. 
And again, we always look forward to su uh, suggestions. I can't talk. I've been talking all weekend. <laughs> yeah. And comments. We're tired. So, yeah. <laughs> but it's been a great show. It has. It has. So, and again, I want to thank Ian for being an awesome cameraman. And he made it through without stumbling or tripping because <laughs> it's not easy to not hold a, a camera and a phone in front of you and walk and navigate through all these people. So, again, everybody, thank you so much. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.